Hey everybody, my name is Alex Merced and basically I, I spend my days as a developer advocate at Dremio a lot of time talking about particularly this technology, Apache Iceberg, which is a, a really awesome technology. If you're not familiar with Apache Iceberg, there are several videos uh, where I go really in depth into what it is and how it works. And I'll show you where you can find that in just a moment. But the purpose of today's video is I'm just going to show you kind of like how you can spin up a Docker container locally. Um, you know, set up a notebook and quickly just run some uh, iceberg queries just so you can just start playing around with iceberg and kind of getting a feel for it. Okay, um, so basically, just first off, this is the actual like iceberg docs page, and I'll put all these links in the video description. Just want to make sure that you guys uh, have this available and are aware of it so you guys can know where to look for this information. Iceberg.apache.org. Again, I am with Dremio, the easy and open data lake house engine uh, which offers you also really cool features and has a lot of interop with iceberg is actually very much uh, iceberg centric so if you want to try that out I highly recommend heading to dremio.com and just hitting this start test drive button and in a few minutes you'll be up and running to actually like test out and get hands on and kind of see some of the cool things you can do with dremio including like querying and working with iceberg tables so that's probably like the quickest easiest way to actually like touch an iceberg table in a few minutes and get to try out some really cool like data lake stuff okay uh, at no cost so I highly recommend doing that start test drive uh, there's this Apache Iceberg 101 article that I have on the subsurface community website um, okay which basically links you to a video series where I go over Iceberg and sort of what it works and a lot of its configurations and settings and whatnot so that's there along with a big directory of pretty much all the best articles on Iceberg around the web so that way you can find what you need when you need it um, to, to get that iceberg knowledge and then I'll also link to this uh, repository where uh, we'll put quick sort of like guides for little uh, ad hoc things and basically today we're going to be focusing on creating that local spark notebook environment so I just kind of wanted to kind of go over how you do that so in order to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to start a Docker container. So I created this Docker image that has Spark 3.3 on it um, and already has uh, you know Python and Notebook pre-installed. So that way life's easy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my terminal. Okay, I'm going to just kind of pin that over to the side. I'm going to go pin this over to the side so that way we can see this side by side. And just to kind of go over the command, we're going to run the container. And we're going to expose port 8888. Uh, the reason being is that uh, when you run the notebook server, by default, it's going to run on port 8888. So we're exposing it that way outside of the container, your browser can see it. Uh, we're going to put a name, Spark Notebook, so that way you can reuse the image. So that way you're not starting a whole new container every time you want to uh, use a notebook. You can turn it on and off and keep working with it. Okay, so I'm going to just take this command. And just literally open it. And this is assuming that you already have Docker installed. So you would have to go install Docker on your computer. Um, but I'll just run that command. And we'll just kind of give that a minute to start up. So there it is. It's starting up. And see, like, there we have this output here. So that's the actual. So what it does is when the container starts, it's actually going to just start up the notebook server right away. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to copy over this URL. So just copy that URL. I can plop it right here into my browser. And there I have a notebook server, okay, all ready to go, okay. And basically what we'll do is we'll create a new notebook. So we'll say create a new Python 3 notebook. And right now what I'm going to do is show you just kind of how you do some settings to run just some local queries. So essentially what you're going to be doing is writing data into the container, okay. So this is merely for like demonstration purposes. So if you scroll right down here, okay, all the way at the bottom we have the sample code. And we can just copy that right over into our notebook. Okay, there it is. And as you can see here, um, all I'm doing is uh, I'm putting OS if you need to get any, any environmental variables. Very important if you're going to be working with like AWS credentials or anything like that. Um, this is just like importing stuff that we need from PySpark. PySpark is also pre installed in this container. Uh, here we're basically creating our Spark configurations, uh, which has a, several different configurations that are important for using Apache Iceberg. First is setting your packages. Because there may be different packages that you need pre-installed, um, so that way you can work with Iceberg. Uh, the setting up the SQL extension, so that way you can run uh, SQL Iceberg specific SQL syntax, and then configuring your catalog. So the way you interact with Iceberg is through a catalog. 
So you have to configure you um, you have to configure a catalog and give it a name. So technically, right here, I'm calling it iceberg. You can call it whatever you want. So um, you know, so this is arbitrary. But the idea is that all these settings are setting up the different settings for this catalog that I called iceberg. So I'm setting up the type to be Hadoop because I'm just using the file system. I'm setting the warehouse where any tables and data will be written to as this folder called iceberg warehouse. Okay, um, essentially these settings kind of show you just this is going to be perfect for just writing right into the container so that way you can just practice and run queries. Okay, and then right here what I'm doing is um, we're starting Spark. So we're just kind of connecting to the local Spark because Spark's running in the container. I'm saying, hey, let me go start a session with that Spark install. And then at that point I can start running like Spark queries. Okay, and then here I can see I, I, I'm running a create table. I'm creating a table, then I'm going to insert some records into that table, and then I'm going to then get the data from that query, save that into a data frame, and then we're just going to show the data frame. Okay, so then if we run this code, okay, so it's now it's going to run. Now it's going to take a second because when it hits this packages, it has to install those packages. It only has to happen once. Once it's installed those packages, then it doesn't have to do that again. And then after that, everything else happens like pretty much instantaneously. So that's going to take a second there. Okay, and once that's finished, so you'll see like it's done doing all the installing. And then afterwards, okay, it's going to run all the queries. And then again, it shows our data frame. So see, we created the table successfully. And we can see that because again, we're doing this all locally. So in that case, it's going to save the data locally. Okay, and so now we see that, hey, look, this folder Iceberg Warehouse got created. And then in there we can see the table. So there's the table that we created. And then again, the way by default it sets it up is that it creates a data directory. So there's all our parquet files with our table's data. And then here's our metadata folder with all the table metadata. So you can go in there and explore even further to kind of actually see like how Iceberg like lays everything out and try all that out. And you know, with this setup, you can also write to S your S3. You can actually work directly with actually like you know, literally just have this local Spark container to do small jobs. Again, you know, you're not going to be working with petabytes of data from a single node Spark container running on your laptop, but you can definitely get some stuff done. Um, so if you click here, um, it'll take you to a different page. And this will show you like different settings you can set up on your for depending on what catalog you'd like to use and if you want to use S3. So it's basically the idea would just be you need to add these two settings with your AWS credentials, and then you should be able to use S3 and write to S3. So you can refer to that. All of that's going to be in the links in the video description. But yeah, this way you can just go play with Iceberg in a local environment um, and kind of get familiar with it and play with it and enjoy it. So. Uh, I'll see you all later. Have a great day. And again, make sure to head over to Dremio.com and try the test drive. Um, I assure you, you'll like it. And again, it's quick, it's free, it's easy. Just gives you a nice touch of what Dremio can do, including working with iceberg tables. And again, also make sure to check out this Apache 101 article, which has lots and lots of really great tutorials and articles on iceberg. Ones I'd like to call attention to, especially like this one, Managing Data as Code. Dremio Arctic. It's a really uh, cool uh, tutorial where I'll walk you through how to use a, something called Dremio Arctic, which is a cool thing you can use as a catalog for Dremio, I mean for Iceberg, that allows you to do like branching and merging. And you can connect to it with Spark, you can connect to it with Dremio, you can connect to it with whatever engine you want, but it gives you that extra data as code feel. Um, but with that, I will see you around. Make sure to follow me on Twitter. Okay, on Twitter. You can follow me at twitter.com slash amdatalakehouse, where I will tweet you know, a lot of video clips, links to articles, uh, all about the data lake house. So hopefully you guys enjoy that. Keep in touch. I'll see you all later. Have a great day and enjoy.